Hello everyone. Today's video will be demonstrating some of the basic editing functions available to you in Simple GIS Client. Whether you're simply just wanting to add custom graphics to your maps or if you're wanting to create new shape files with attribute data, we'll kind of show you each of these in today's video. So to begin, I have a simple GIS project that I've created that has several shapefile layers loaded uh, within this project as can be seen in my table of contents view here on the left hand side of my map data view document. So as I mentioned you can add either graphics to your map document or you could edit features within a shapefile layer for instance and really the difference is with the graphics um, graphics have no associated attribute data with the graphic they are simply drawings on top of your map in addition uh, graphics are stored and saved within your simple GIS project file versus a shape file it's really a data table and these are all on the table of contents here on my left hand side in this particular case these are shape files I uh, could have raster layers or web mapping services loaded in this as well. But the shape file um, contains the geometry of the features plus attribute data and then it's symbolized based upon the legend that you set for the shape file. So in this case I can see under natural features uh, I have several different uh, categories based upon an attribute uh, within the shape file table that tells it what symbol to use. Uh, when it draws those features. However, um, unlike a shapefile, a graphic uh, simply has all its symbology saved with the graphic and again has no attribute data. These two uh, tools that, that I'm pointing to here are the tools you would use for either adding graphics or doing feature editing. Uh, the uh, tool here just to the left of the far right tool is all of the drawing tools you can use to add graphics to your map data view document and then this tool uh, right next to it is all of the tools available for feature editing in a shapefile or vector layer and currently all of these tools are disabled because I currently don't have a layer um, my active layer is not set in an edit state so to begin if I want to click and just simply select one of these graphic drawing tools so for instance like draw point I simply select the tool and then click on the map and I see that it places this graphic and if you'll notice I have these black handles around my graphic these are actually edit handles because the graphic is selected and this far left tool with the red arrow is my select graphics tool and if I select that I can see as I move my mouse over the selected graphic I have options to edit it so I see my mouse cursor change to this four-way arrow which indicates I can simply click and drag to move that graphic to a new location. I can click and drag on any one of these graphic handles and stretch and resize my graphic. And I can with my selection tool selected if I click off of the graphic I see that the handles disappear. I can reselect it by simply clicking and dragging a box to intersect the graphic. And then with the graphic selected, I can delete the graphic by simply hitting my delete key on my keyboard, which will delete all selected graphics out of my map data view document. I just selected draw polyline for my tool list, and I just simply click at each location for where I want to place a vertex for the line. And now if I use my select graphics tool, I can use these graphic handles again to stretch the line if I want to resize it. I can even click on the center handle and click and drag to actually rotate the line if I so choose. One thing I need to mention here is you notice the symbol that is used to render the graphic with. This symbol is inherited from your view um, properties. If you go under your view menu and go to set view properties, you see you have default symbols for points, lines, text, and polygons. So as you add new graphics, it inherits these default symbols. 
and I could change this default symbol if I wanted to for any particular line and now notice if I draw a new polyline and I just double click to complete the line I think I forgot to mention that earlier but you see that it has now rendered with the new uh, symbol but also notice if I double click on this graphic with my select graphics tool it brings up this graphic properties dialog box and I see I have this current symbol under the symbol tab I can double click on the symbol and actually choose a new symbol for the graphic if I so choose so I just simply can select a symbol from the palette and see it change in the dialog box and when I hit apply I see that my polyline is now rendered with that new symbol if I double click on the graphic again and bring up the graphic properties dialog box you see there's also a geometry tab that lists all of the points uh, on the polyline as I click on these points you can see it highlight the vertex on the line itself and then there's also a graphic tag that you can associate with a graphic which is just uh, acts as a, an identifier um, for the graphic itself typically you really wouldn't need to use that um, but there may be some special cases to use that so in this case again you can see I can stretch and move uh, and resize the graphic feature using these handles but also notice if I uh, let me move up here so you can see the entire menu but if I right click in my map data view document I have all of these uh, other edit options so one of them is called edit vertex and what that enables me to do if I use my select graphics and reselect my line you see now instead of getting the uh, handles around the graphic I actually have these points highlighted for each vertex location on the line and I can just simply click and drag to edit and move this vertex so if I right click again you can see I can add a new vertex if I so choose in the line by simply selecting that menu option and then clicking on the line where I want to add that new vertex point and so now if I go back to my right click menu and say edit vertex you can see now I can even drag this new vertex I just added and edit the line again in addition I can actually turn snapping on to snap to vertexes of other features uh, so right now my snap target I'm going to make this natural features my active layer my table of contents and I see I have this water feature here on my map and if I right uh, click and I'm going to select set snap target and what that does is sets the snapping to the active layer of my table of contents which is this natural features layer and now if I select snap to vertex and if I was to go and edit one of these vertexes if I drag it on this water feature you see how it is snapping to the vertices uh, within that feature so that just allows me to snap uh, one feature to another feature and I'm going to disable snapping so when I do that now is if I was to edit this vertex or uh, this feature it would no longer snap so I'm going to come back and select graphics and I'm going to drag a box and select both of these lines which uh, you see now that they are both selected you can see the uh, vertices highlighted on each line feature and if I just hit my delete key it has now deleted both graphics uh, out of my map data view document and I'm also going to disable vertex edit uh, for now so now let's say we wanted to create a new shapefile so if I went under my layer edit menu there is a new shapefile option I can select and here um, the first thing I need to do is in this dialog box that comes up I'm going to click this uh, button with the folder icon to bring up a new file dialog box and so in this file dialog box I simply uh, navigate to the folder where I want to create the new shapefile 
uh, I'm going to leave it set under my public documents folder and I will simply type in a new file name for my shape file so this one I'm just going to call my polygon shape file and click open which will put the file name and in a shape file a, a single shape file can only contain one type of geometry so it can contain all points or it can contain all polylines polygon or what we call multi-point features which is a single feature but that is composed of multiple points in this case I'm going to select polygon for my geometry type and now I would need to add uh, what field what attribute fields I want to store in the shape file by default it just sticks uh, this one field called FID which is a type of integer uh, that's the type of data that it would hold to add a new field I simply click on the plus button type in a name for the field what type of field and in particular if it's a string field how wide uh, the field needs to be and then also if I want to create an attribute index on that field I would check this index box by default again when you create a new shapefile it'll uh, have the FID field just add it since the shapefile must contain at least one field uh, but now I added a couple of others and when I click OK it asks me it creates the shapefile and asks me if I want to add it to my view which I do and I see that it has been added to the top of my map data view document at the top of my table of contents so now if I wanted to edit this shapefile and again this is uh, the new one I created but this could be any shapefile that you've added uh, into your map data view document uh, again the, the legend that it's assigned with just inherits the default symbol for my view properties but I can change that easily which we'll cover in a minute but to begin editing the shapefile I'm going to go underneath my layer edit menu and with my shapefile the active layer my table of contents I select the toggle edit menu option and as I do that uh, if you'll notice this uh, X that was next to the box to my layer name which indicates whether the layer is turned on or not in my uh, view changes from a black to a red X the red X indicates that the shapefile is in an editable state um, so it is open for editing and so now I can simply come here not to my graphic tools here which adds uh, graphic features but to the tool list right next to that I see I have all of these um, feature edits and I have this uh, if you notice not all of them are enabled for instance adding a line function is not enabled because this uh, shapefile that we're editing is a polygon shapefile and can only contain polygon features so I see that I have add rectangle add ellipse or add polygon I select add polygon I simply click to add vertices and then double click to complete the polygon and I now see when I do that I have this new polygon feature added uh, in my shapefile so again this feature that we just created in the shapefile is being rendered based upon uh, the legend property for the shapefile that we've set in this particular map data view document if I click on this view feature data tool and then click on this new feature we added I see that it uh, brings up the attribute fields for this feature and if I click once and then click again I can see that now I can edit the values uh, in this field and I'm just going to type in a new value for that field and when I click off of it I see that it is added in uh, the value that I just typed in so I'm just simply going to type in a new value and I'll call this uh, TYP1 for the type and again uh, so as I do that I can actually edit uh, those attribute values for that feature using that view feature data tool 
And so now I've added this new polygon. If I wanted to edit this polygon, I select the Edit Feature tool. And I see, just like if I was editing a graphic, when I drag a box to intersect the polygon feature, I get the same uh, graphic edit handles I had uh, before when I was just editing a simple graphic. And I can use these operate exactly the same. I can use these to edit the feature. I can double click on the feature. Um, the symbol, even though I have this symbol box and I can choose a different symbol, it's not going to change the appearance of my feature on the map because again with the shapefile uh, this symbol is uh, determined by the legend assigned to the shapefile. So the symbol is not actually part of of the feature but it's determined uh, by the graphic I mean by the uh, legend. Also if I double click on it and bring up the graphic properties dialog box I can go to the geometry tab and select on each point and I could actually type in new values for these points if I wanted to change the position of that point. It's probably not the easiest way to edit. Um, again I can use my edit vertex tool right clicking and selecting that from my right click menu to actually edit these individual vertices uh, if I wanted to do that. And again I can do snapping as well so Again, I'd already set uh, the snapping to the natural feature, so if I just enable the snap to vertex, I see as I edit and move the vertices on this polygon features, and I move over this water feature, which is in the natural feature shape file, it actually snaps to the vertex uh, that I'm closest to as I move my mouse over that feature. And again, the symbol that the feature is rendered with is based upon the legend uh, specified for the shapefile. So I can see it here and I'm just going to go and I'm going to disable my snapping. So I'll scroll down to disable snapping and then I'm going to uh, disable the vertex editing. And if I actually double click on the layer and bring up the layer properties dialog box and go to the legend tab, you can see that right now I just have a simple legend type defined, which means use the same symbol for every feature. If I change this to unique, uh, when I do, I need to select a field to classify the features by, and I'm just going to click on this Add Unique Values button at the bottom that goes through all of the records in my shapefile, and based upon that field I selected, it um, adds a Classification for each unique feature it finds on my shapefile, which in this case I only have one. I can double click on the symbol in the grid to bring up the symbol palette and choose a new symbol if I'd like to for this particular classification. One of the things for a unique feature classification is this add no data class here located at the bottom. And that's important because right now we see we only have this one classification based upon this type field. And the add no data class is important if I'm adding new features. Uh, otherwise they may not be visible as I add the new features because initially their values will not match anything in our legend classification. So to illustrate, so as I click apply I see that um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a new polygon feature. And as I add this new polygon feature, I see that it's not visible on my map as I complete that symbol. And that's because it has a null value in its type field, and my legend is based upon a classification on that type field. And so all I see is the one feature I had already added before. So again, if I open up my legend, I see that I just have this single classification. So if I go and click this Add No Data class, all that does is adds a new classification to my legend, and I can double click and change its symbol if I'd like. And what that does is, if there's any features that doesn't match one of the other classifications, it says it will be rendered with a symbol provided in that No Data class. So in this case, for this new feature I just added, um, since I had already or had not uh, typed a value into that uh, 
type field, which the legend is based on. It didn't know how to render it. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a value in. And uh, I'll add a name to this as well. And so I see that it's still rendered with a no data class. And the reason is because the value I entered doesn't match any of the classification. So it uses the no data class. I can click on the plus button at the bottom of my grid to add a new row for a new classification in my legend. So I see I have this new row added, and if I click the minus button, it removes whatever the selected row is that I had in my legend. So I'm going to click a plus and add a new uh, classification, and then I'm going to double click on the value to bring up an edit box, and same thing with a label. And I'm going to enter the new values that I want for this new classification. And then again, I'm going to double click on the symbol and select a new symbol. And now when I click apply, I see that my new polygon feature is rendered uh, based upon its classification, its new classification as determined by my legend. So now I've just gone back to my layer properties and now I've gone to the label definition tab. Now I'm actually going to select some fields that I want to label, in this case just the name field, and I'm going to set or accept all of the default for the label settings. And when I click apply, I see that it has now labeled my polygon features based upon that name field. And so one thing I want to show you is the undo and redo functionality. So under my layer edit menu, if I select layer edit and undo, it undoes the last edit operation, which was in this case the name field or the name value I had put in the name field on my new feature. And if I continue to select undo, I see now that it's gone back to the no data class rendering because it has removed the uh, value I had put in the type field. And if I do undo again, it actually removes the feature. Likewise, if I come under layer edit and select redo, it just redoes all of those edit operations that were just undone. So as I continue to click redo, I see that it restores uh, back my edit operations. So this concludes the basic editing tutorial, but um, if you just look at some of the layer edit tools here, you'll see that there are a lot of advanced editing features as well as under the layer edit menu here, which we'll be covering in a future um, demo. Uh, I just encourage you to look for that. It will be covered some of the advanced editing features available to you in Simple GIS. And of course, as always, uh, if you'd like more information, please visit the website. The website is www.simplegissoftware.com. Thank you.